Hey guys, Kev here, and I want to talk about two very unique flashlights. And the first one is the Olight O Clip. So big shout out to Olight. They were kind enough to send these my way. And what I'm going to do is talk about the flashlight, and then I'm going to put a beam shot footage video in, and then I'm going to do the next light. So that way it'll be kind of grouped together for each light. And I'm going to try to keep it relatively quick for me. So Olight sent me these. I have a copper one, which is really cool. It's like this aged copper look. Uh, I think it's clear coated, so that's nice. Kind of keeps that patina. There's the standard black and blue version. And then there's the uh, standard green version. All of them are really nice. And um, my biggest takeaway with this light is how accessible it is, how easy it is to carry and use and I think that's going to make it very popular because there's a lot of people who just want a flashlight that works. They just want something they can toss into a bag, clip to whatever. And this solves a lot of problems. I mean, you could give this to a kid, boom, right on the backpack strap, right? You give this to uh, a woman, boom, right on the purse if she carries one. Doesn't carry a purse, boom, right in the pocket. There's just so many options for this clip. It's it's seriously amazing. And then you have this little hole if you wanted to put a lanyard on it instead. You could obviously just put it in your pocket as well. But you could use this as a, just a pocket clip. If you want to just slide it in your pocket like this, it'll keep it inside, keep it hidden. Or you can clip it like this and have this exposed and then use the light. It's just like possibilities are endless with this. And it is not a useless flashlight. Like it's actually really good um i mean run times i should grab just to double check the run times on it you're gonna be looking at 90 minutes on medium so i would argue most people with this flashlight once you watch the beam shot footage you'll see are probably going to use it on medium for the most part that gives you an hour and a half of run time on medium look how small this is and at that medium, you're talking about 100 lumens. It feels like way more, by the way. And that 100 lumens is absolutely plenty for basic EDC purposes, right? You can get 300, but it only lasts for a minute and then it drops to 180. Um, but I would stick with that medium and I think that's the sweet spot. Um, so you have this USB charging port right here, which is really convenient. It's obviously um, protected here from water is it ipx rated uh let's see if it says it on here if not it's something you can always look up sorry i should have checked that um but here's some more uh specs if you want to pause and read those so um you have the uh, charging port there and then you have this button here and the way this functions is super simple if you want it to uh come on on moonlight you just hold down and now you have moonlight mode. And this is very uh, moonlighty. Um, you're talking about 1.5 lumens. 1.5 lumens. All right. And then you just hold from there and you'll cycle up to low, medium. This is the one I'm telling you everybody's going to use. You get an hour and a half of this. Okay. So I can clip this to my shirt right here. Boom. Boom. Just hang it off of my freaking hoodie strap. You can do whatever you want with it. That's the cool part. Um, and then you have high right here. And again, one minute then drops to 180. Back to low. And then you can actually double tap for a red. And this is a beacon. So if you're riding a bike or something like that, you can do that. Or hold and you get a solid red. You could also use this as moonlight. I think it's five lumens on red. And this may be something I would use for Moonlight. I like the uh, secondary colors. That's why basically all my custom flashlights have a Dragon Driver with a secondary color. And then you just tap for off. I believe you can lock it as well if you have it on and then hold down. Let's see. Oh, no, it's probably double tap hold. I didn't check this because... Um, it was locked when I got it. So Moonlight is on. So let's try holding there. Nope.
Double tap, hold, no. No. It's gotta be a way to, you hold through the moonlight? Yep, okay. So you just hold through the moonlight, keep holding and it will lock the light. So then you hold again, boom, turns on. Sorry, I didn't know that one. And then obviously you do have strobe with the one, two, three. Uh-oh. Oh, did I lock it? There, I just went too fast. And you get the strobe. Um, and so the functionality is really simple. You know, once you know what you're doing, you just hit the button, right? And then hold to cycle, right? Um, and honestly, locking it is easy. You just hold through moonlight. Once you know that, it's pretty, it's pretty easy, right? Um, so I really love this thing. I'm glad they sent me these because they were like, hey, have you checked this out? And I was like, no. And um, so they sent some. I'll probably give away one or two of these. I'm not sure. I'm going to probably check to see if my wife wants one. Um, or maybe if she wants me to put one on my kid's backpack or something. I don't know. I think these are super useful. They're so small and they're, they're tuckable. Like you can tuck them into places perfectly, clip them to anything, right? Scenarios are really endless. So you get it. I'm going to take you to the beam shot footage and then, um, I will come back and we'll talk about the Wubin L1. All right, guys. Thank you very much. Shout out to Olight. There is a link down below to this, uh, to Olight. And then you can use my code LEFTYEDC to get 10% off as long as it's not on sale already. Um, and I appreciate Olight for sending these. All right, check out the beam shot footage. Peace. Hey guys, Kev here. And I wanted to give you a look at the O-clip from Olight outside just to show you what it can do. I mean, for such a small light, I've been impressed indoors. I haven't really tried it outdoors, so let's see. I have the green one here. Obviously, they're all the same. This might be black, actually. I'm not sure. So let's hold down. That'll give us moonlight. So for me, I can barely see it past this right here. Obviously, I can see the sign when it bounces off, but it's not really doing anything. It's not reaching that tree. So let's bump it up. Now, um, it's getting my yard a little bit. I mean, this is meant to be an up-close situation, right? So, like, let's look at my truck here, right? I dropped something on the ground. I need to look. Um, I can kind of see with this. Uh, it's not great, but it's giving me enough light to at least spot something. So let's bump it up. And now... I'm getting uh, a, plenty of light. This is plenty here. So now I could search for whatever I need. I think they say on high you get about uh, two, was it one minute or three minutes before it kicks down? Now, I don't know if this is high. We're going to check that now. No, so that wasn't even high. This is high. So I'm thinking on this mode you get about a minute, and then it's going to drop back down to where we just were, which is plenty. I mean... My whole truck is lit up. Um, it even goes across the street. Like, this is impressive. It's lighting that tree. <laughs> I'm pretty shocked with this, actually. Look at that. Let's go back down. And this would be that media mode that was... I, I think this is plenty for most people to do whatever you need. And then you could just clip this thing to whatever you need. I mean, that's crazy to me and here's the red obviously not getting much distance on that but you know you can use it for whatever you need and then if you need uh i think it's there's like a beacon mode you can use that on a bicycle or something and then you just clip this tiny sucker to whatever your shirt your purse uh yeah this thing's impressive so there you go guys uh let me know what you think about the o clip and uh the links are down below. You can use my code, LeftyEDC. And uh, thanks to Olight for sending me these out. And I love you guys. Catch you later. Peace. All right, let's check out the Wubin L1. So this is another very unique flashlight. And I think this one is super cool. It has one downside, and that's what I just showed you. I accidentally hit the buttons all the time. 
and I could not find a lockout mode when I checked the instructions. I looked um, in the unboxing. You can check. I searched. There was no uh, lockout that I could find. Usually with Wubin, it's a uh, quad press. Right? But that gives you stroke. One, two, three, four. It just keeps giving me stroke. One hold. If I hold down, there's just, I'm just not getting, just not getting a lockout. So I've tried holding both buttons. Oh, wait. I think it's just telling us the battery reading. Yeah, I don't know. No lockout I can find. Anyway, that's my one gripe on the light because I accidentally hit the buttons. But uh, this is really cool. So it has a magnetic tail. So you can mount this anywhere and you literally have, I mean, you have infinite possibilities. You can flood or throw to any position. You could magnet it to anything and then turn it. I mean, you literally have endless options there. So... The magnet is pulling that out. You have a 21700 cell, 4800 milliamp hour, 17.76 watt hours, 3.7 volts, all right? So you get uh, you get plenty of juice in here, I'd say. Now, one thing I did note in the unboxing, if you did worry about lockout, um, if you want to do that, you just twist this, and you're good. And then you just tighten it again, and you're back. So, little twist, it's not going to come off or anything. Um, so, that's one option there if you're worried about it like I am. Um, you do have a pocket clip on here. Uh, you know, it works. I wouldn't use a pocket clip on a light like this anyway, so it doesn't matter. Honestly, I'd probably try to just take it off. See, did it again. <laughs> it's like I always do it. You have a charging port right here. You have USB-C, and this is very waterproof right there. I don't know the IPX rating. That's all on their website. If you want, like, really detailed specs, you can go there. Sorry. Um, let's talk about the flashlight. So let's talk about the flood option. That's the button down here, okay? So with the flood option, you have simple uh, programming. It's literally just on, off, and then hold for cycle. And that's it. There's no double press, there's no triple press, there's no hold, there's nothing. There's no moonlight, so you're just on cycle, all right? And you get a low, medium, high. It gets really bright. You're going to see that in the beam shot footage at the end here. And that's it. And this is a floody optic. So it's meant to basically, and you'll see, it creates a wall around you of light. Like, so just take this straight out the side. Obviously, it's not coming backwards. But straight out the side and then straight ahead, it's basically a wall of light. It's really well done. Um, I was surprised. It was literally covering my entire peripheral um, vision. So I really like how they set that up. All right. And then up here, you have a throwy optic with a reflector right, which is cool, and that's this button. Now, this button has a little more functionality. You can hold for what I think is just low, because watch, let's go high, right? That looks the same to me as this. So I don't think it's actually moonlight, but you can hold to go to low or moonlight or whatever. It's not very low either. Um, this would be a little too bright for me to go around moonlighting. Uh, like using in my bedroom or something. I think it would just be a little much. I mean, it's not crazy, but for me. Um, you can see the hot spot and spill. This is uh, very, very well done. Uh, and obviously, if you wanted flood, you just bang, right? Now you have flood. Now you have all spill and just a little hot spot. So there's your difference right there, right? This is more hot spot, less spill. So you go low medium you can see how it's more like a sun now and then bang full on right you still get decent spill but you get a great hot spot you'll see it uh, and then there's a turbo as well so that is actually a little brighter i wasn't sure outside but um this will uh this will throw this will throw it's getting warm but i mean that's kind of the point you have plenty of 
room back here to hold the flashlight. So you also have a strobe warning if you triple click. Um, the ergonomics are <clears throat> pretty good. I mean, it's a cylinder. The one downside is this clip. It's just in my way all the time, trying to hold it. It's just in the way. And um, I'm, obviously you can just pop it off uh, if you have enough, you know, finger strength to pop it off, you could, <clears throat> and get it out of your way. Because I think it would be more comfortable if you could hold it like this. Yeah, you can. It's just that clip is a little annoying. But I really like this flashlight because, <clears throat> excuse me, because it gives you both flood and throw options without trying to shove it all into one head. That's what she said. Now, I think that um, Nightcore does a really good job at this as well. They did it by putting them into one head and letting you choose which to use. So it has the reflector, but you have those eight LEDs around if you go full flood, right? But if you want just throw, you can do that or you can click on and utilize it, right? Downside is when you go full flood, you're also getting the throwy optic at the same time. You're getting both. Where with this, you can choose and maybe it conserves your battery a little bit because now I can use this. And then if I want to flood, I just switch over here, right? You get a little bit more maneuverability with this because you have the magnet <clears throat> and you have the rotating head. So give and take, right? This one definitely better for tactical purposes because you can hit them with lumen shield. You have search mode. I think this one's a little more intuitive because I can just use the tail switch once you know how it works, right? Um, it's really good. Now you have a manual lockout here. I really like that, wish this had that. But <clears throat> internal battery, this one you can replace the battery and it has the magnet. So there's some pluses and minuses to both systems. You could also compare it to the uh, Ace Beam Terminator M2 or M1, I forget which one I had in. And that <clears throat> is also very good, but it's in this fat, stubby sort of package where I like this better in that sense. I like the function, ergonomic and everything a little better on the Ace Beam. But uh, overall, I think this one really does a fantastic job hitting both flood and throw without sacrificing much, right? The sacrifice is I accidentally hit the button sometime, but guess what? This kind of light, I'm not carrying this around in my pocket or anything. So it's always going to be in my hand. If I make a mistake, I can just click it back off, right? Or I can do the tail screw trick. So um, I think this is one of the best options in that throw flood category. So check it out. Wubin L1. <clears throat> You'll see the uh, beam footage here now. Uh, there is a link to Wubin down below. I believe they might also be having some kind of sale for an anniversary or something. So keep an eye on that. And uh, yeah, let me know if you guys have any questions. I love you all. I hope you have a fantastic day. Oh, and I do have a code for Wubin as well. It'll get you 20% off. I think it's Lefty EDC 20 or Lefty EDC. It's in the description, but 20% off. That's pretty good. Uh, love you guys. Hope you have a great day and uh, check out the beam footage and then I'll catch you later. Peace. Hey guys, Kev here and I have the Wubin L1. Uh, this is their flashlight that rotates. Very cool. Um, and I actually turned it on on myself, which is one reason I wish there was a lockout. I don't think there is. I think I figured that out in the uh, unboxing. So here's your uh, power light. And then we're going to go through the modes here. So we're going to start with the uh, side light. Uh, let me get it on the lowest mode. And actually, since we can, I'll rotate it out so it's on the front. Um, although, oh wait, I have them both on like an idiot. Okay, hold on. Jesus. <laughs> See, this is the downside with this system. Um, you just keep hitting buttons on accident. All right, let's turn everything off. All right, so now I have that one up. 
I want this one up. I guess if I had two hands, this would be easier. And then I want to push the bottom button to start. All right, we got it? We good? Okay. So, I just again make sure we're on low. Okay, here we go. So, this is the light on low. This is your flood sort of light. So, you're not getting much out of the uh, low, which is good. It's kind of like a moonlight. We can test and see if there is a moonlight. There is not. I'm holding down. No moonlight mode that I can tell. Double tap. Just on with this one. So we're on. Low. Doesn't even reach the tree for me. I mean, you can kind of see a, a shadow or whatever, but it's not really, you know, doing much for me. You can see it, but that's not in real life. Here we go. Now that... Just making sure it turns something else on. That is pretty nice right there. Look at that. I mean, now the tree is basically lit up almost completely. There's the house. I mean, does a fabulous job, especially up close, right? That's kind of the point here. And then goes even brighter. This is your high mode, and this is absolutely plenty. Um, the whole area is flooded. Uh, the best way to show you this is the spill. I don't know if you can see that shadow right there, but that spill is encompassing my entire peripheral. So, like, it's just a wall in front of me of light. So, it actually has pretty good, uh, has pretty good throw, too, to be honest. Um, and it's like a wall of light. So, that's really nice. All right, let's rotate this around, try not to turn it on. <laughs> <laughs> all right and then we're gonna go with the top dog here this is the low mode for the top dog let's try moonlight on this one there it is eh not much of a moonlight that is classifying as moonlight i guess but it's also the same as low apparently so um here you go you can see there's much less um of uh flood right like um spill sorry you get more of a hot spot right you get more of a hot spot and a little bit of spill not just crazy flood that is obviously the point of a thrower but just saying so here we're hitting that tree on low no problem and we're gonna bump it up now we're really cooking um that light is nice and lit up now we're gonna be able to travel Right, so now I can hit those trees. I can hit those trees back there, just kind of ding them. Right, um, that tree. So, um, yeah, lighten up that house over there. It's pretty good. And then here is high. And again, just a nice hot spot with a lot of spill. I mean, it does a good job with the spill. You can see that. I like this quite a bit. It's traveling really far. I mean, this is, look at that. I mean, it's hitting those trees way over there. Definitely hitting that house. Very, very good. And then you have, you do have a turbo with this, which I'm pretty sure is just high again, but maybe a little bit, a little bit more juice. Man, it cooks, doesn't it? That's really nice, man. And then this also has a strobe and uh yeah so there you go that's the uh beam shot footage for the wubin l1 very cool light very interesting light i like the concept it's kind of like the ace beam terminator m2 or m1 but it keeps it in a normal flashlight form which i prefer especially if you're going to carry this type of thing right so let me know what you guys think appreciate you love you peace